Hi Ryan, welcome to Jeff's podcast again, mate. So uh, happy to, I'm so happy to have you here. I mean, I should have, th- you know, brought you in a really long time back, but uh, you know, apologies for that. But yeah, thanks so much for hopping in right now. So please tell a bit about yourself and how you started this podcasting and you know this lifestyle and where you are now. So please. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I've been on admi- admiring your podcast and your content for for a while now, and you know, I. I've been in this podcast game for four years, but really professionally for two or three. And when I say professionally, I'll take it back a little bit. You know, I I used to be a mechanic. That was my full time job, full time and part time job. I wanted to get out of that. I always say I wanted to make my my five to nine, my nine to five. So my real goal was, can I become a freelancer or can I freelance primarily for one company? I didn't know how it was going to work out, but mm. what I'm trying to say is I need, I wanted to get out of that kind of mainstream yeah. job. I, I didn't really want the normal nine to five. I just wanted to try it and see how it was going to go. So I was in college. I applied for freelance jobs and I got linked up with a marketing agency and I built out a podcast for them. I worked for them for a year and a half and it turns out the company went bankrupt. They were $200,000 in debt. They filed for bankruptcy when I was leaving. Um, it was terrible leadership. You know, they built, they had this entire idea for this podcast. They asked me to do everything, which was book the guest, promotion, distribution, show notes, SEO, you know, audio, video, graphics, like everything. I did everything. And I just, they, it was like their idea, but then they stopped doing it and they put it on the back burner and they didn't believe in it and they didn't believe in content. And they thought that they had to just email 5,000 people a week and they they didn't understand the power of organic marketing when they were literally a marketing company that Mm -hmm. brought me on to propel their brand through organic marketing from a podcast. So I came on to do this and then it was working and we were like getting like leads out of it. We were getting whatever we wanted out of it. Um, but we didn't know how to leverage the content. The basically the company brought me on to do this, but then didn't even believe in themselves, even though I still believed in it. So that was really my first take at launching a podcast for somebody else. And then I, after that, I left that company. I started my business. I really didn't start a business. I was still a freelancer, you know, solo, just, just me and one man team. And I launched a podcast for another company. Mm -hmm. Not, not the, it wasn't the same scenario. This company had more than enough money. They were like Mm -hmm. a massive multi multi multi-million dollar company. And I would say probably a mid-sized company, about 500, 2000 employees. That was the company that was paying for all everything with this podcast. Once again, um, they didn't really know they brought me on for production and they, but they didn't fill in the other gaps, which were marketing, promotion, distribution, yeah. right? All these things. How do we get the content to people? So once again, I'm in the same position, like working with a company, they're not understanding. I don't have that much control. Plus I'm really the production guy. And after that, I said, you know what? I'm going to figure out how to do this for individual people. I'm not working with businesses and companies anymore. Now I get to work with businesses on my, my terms. And that might be a selfish way to put it, but it really is like, if I work with your business, I need to do it my way or else it's not, it, or, or at least we need, you need to know how I'm gonna work with you or else it's not gonna work because I work with people on a one-to-one basis, right? So I realized that I pivoted my mission for, for this. I created more of a business entity podcast principles itself rather than just myself freelancing and you know that's a little bit all over the place but it really does encapsulate the trajectory of my journey when it comes to podcasting it started with starting my own podcast that's how i got into podcasting in 2018 yeah. launching podcasts for these two companies them quote unquote failing and then me going okay how do i make a system that actually works and then you know from there we can go in any any direction but i hope that that, that kind of tells the story yeah, that that's really awesome. I think I can totally relate to the point when you mentioned like, you know, the first two things where you, you mentioned like, you know, it was complete failure of, you know, actually the complete failure was on the company's part, I guess it wasn't the failure on our side. I mean, like we did, uh, you probably must have experimented a lot, uh, you know, doing things like, will this work or will this work? You know, we probably must have done a lot. So I guess uh, that's a really good take. And one thing that you also mentioned that is, you know, uh, letting you work on your own terms. Uh, so you know, that's, I, I think it's a lot of people not understanding, you know, it's good when they have an expert and they have an expertise on that matter. It's good. For example, if you're working for a podcaster, then yeah, probably he must have learned a lot of things. You know, he must be micromanaging. It's good. But you know, when, when they're referring to a new domain, it's kind of pretty hard. So yeah, I guess, I guess that totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really, it, it's tough as well when you don't understand how creative arts works and media and content, and you're trying to hire somebody for that. If you don't understand it, 
then it's going to be really hard because the decisions that they make aren't going to make sense to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that educational piece comes in. That's why you have this podcast. It's so we can, that's why I started a new podcast. That's why all my content, I try to be educational because we have to let people know how this works. So then they can be confident in bringing somebody in to help them. Right. So, yeah. yeah, got it. Got it. I didn't know one thing you mentioned, like you actually, uh, did a podcast first then you then got the two companies right that's what you mentioned so yeah, what was yeah, that what was that podcast was about the first yeah thing? and that one has changed over time too so for originally it was called the millennial mind podcast and I, i'm really at the edge of millennial like i'm i'm i'm, I'm a young millennial like i'm on, mm -hmm. on that edge of it um but i i was like okay i guess this is the generation that i'm in like i was yeah. trying to find a name for it everything was millennial this millennial that so i called it the millennial mind podcast and it was really the first two episodes were me and this webcam just like talking to the to the um to the camera and the first couple episodes got like a couple hundred views on youtube and i'm like that's more than enough to start. I thought it was yeah. going to get like five and I, I, not to say I didn't, I had an audience that wasn't large. It was probably like in the hundreds, um, maybe, maybe, maybe towards a thousand, but mm. at that point, and I just didn't expect the, my core audience who was actually a really fans of my music because I'm mm. a rapper too and a, and a producer. So I had an audience for that, but I just, did this podcast thing kind of on a whim, just wanted to try it mm -hmm. and ended up doing okay. And I met somebody who made six figures on the stock market in a year when they were like 21 years old. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, now I want to make it an interview show just so I can interview this guy. So mm -hmm. I got another mic, we set up the webcam. Now it's an interview podcast. Since episode three, we're at over a hundred episodes now of, of just 95% uh, interviews. And so, yeah. you know, all, most of them in person too. So it's really been a journey of building that podcast. I transitioned after episode seven, I called it, I transitioned it to Bopcast. It's B-O-P-C-A-S-T, Bopcast, mm -hmm. um, because of my rap name, uh, which is Sully Bop, S-U-L-L-Y-B-O-P. So we had Sully Bop and then we had Bopcast, right? So I wanted to keep it on brand, so to say, that's like the buzzword that they say, but I really wanted it to be tied to me. So if this podcast was done, it was because of me, you know? Yeah. And so I wanted that to be completely tied to what I do. So that's the evolution um, a lot of ins and outs, you know, a lot of really interesting guests and, and, and working LinkedIn and networking to get cool people. And, you know, so it's been a lot of fun, man, but it's, uh, it's, it's mostly people who had never been on podcasts before, mm -hmm. but have an interesting story to tell. So that's, you know, um, just, just to wrap up that thought, the, the gist of the podcast is I interview outliers who are breaking the mold, regardless of the status quo. So these yeah, are people yeah. who they could be working a nine to five job or they could be working a nine to five and hustling on a side hustle on the side. They could have started their own business. Hmm. Um, you know, people who are mostly young people, but I'm delving into other um, age groups now, but mostly young people who are really trying to take control of their life and do what they want. So that's that's the evolution of my podcast. It's changed a lot over the last four years, but that's the reason why I started in the in, in podcasting. So how, how do the podcast principles come in? Is it like separate one or is it like something uh, you transition from it as well? Well, yeah, the, the business really was separate from my podcast, like I the, see. my podcast, and it still remains that my business isn't even a sponsor on my own podcast. You know? <laughs> so um, like you won't find it, you'll find it on my Instagram profile and stuff. But mm -hmm. I like to keep my podcast 100% organic, like in the way that I'm not using it as a self promotional uh, vehicle, I'm mm -hmm. using it just as delivering the content and building a fan base based on that content. Yeah. Um, but podcast principles came about from my freelance podcast editing and just realizing that, um, you know, that I wanted to take it to, to a level beyond just myself. And it's really funny because we mentioned this off camera, but I'll tell it now of how the name podcast principles came about. I had the idea in my head. Um, I'll take credit for that idea of podcast <laughs> principles. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was my idea. Um, it wasn't only my idea though. And I remember one day I'm in college, right? And I'm, and I'm still just freelance podcast editing. And I'm like, you know what? I know I'm going to start this business. I've been watching Gary Vee for like eight years. I'm like, eventually I'll start this. And I'm thinking, I'm like, one day, let me just register the domain. You know, let me go and go daddy. Let me just register the domain. So I have it, you know? And I, that day I just ended up registering the domain, you know, it only takes like five, 10 minutes to do that. And then three days later, I get this email to my personal email and it's like, Hey man, um, my name is like, I, I forget, I forget his name. Um, but my name is, uh, Ken, I think, or something like that. I own this podcast, uh, launch company and I want to write an ebook called podcast principles. Would you consider selling your domain? 
And this was <laughs> three years, three or three days later, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, uh, no, <laughs> maybe for like five. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'll sell it for like five grand, 10 grand, you know, something like that. Yeah. Some crazy stupid number. Right. And th he ended up being one of the like nicest guys. Like we chopped it up. He has a great podcast the launch company. And, um, so that, but that's really how the name came about. It was an idea, but luckily I registered at the right time because yeah. he was about to pick it up. Oh, <laughs> I think, I think it's kind of like written somewhere. The universe like told you, dude, just do it right now. Just do it right now. Or else, you know, it might not be a future, but yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, man. Do it now. <laughs> that's pretty great. So, you know, you, you mentioned rapper. So I, I actually, you know, still it's in mind. So I will definitely talk about that later on. So no, uh, make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, so just coming on to the, you know, the discussion, I just want to ask a few things relating to, uh, you know, what you, and uh, you know, the pl place where the expertise is, uh, you help people, you know, launch, grow and, you know, um, monetize and do a lot of things in the field of podcasting. So I, this, uh, question is mainly for applicable for those people who already have a podcast. Okay, so uh, obviously this uh, COVID have given a lot of people different perspectives in podcasting. They must have grown a lot. I think on April 2021, there were around 2 million podcasts so far. I'm sure there would be a lot right now. So uh, the thing is, what do you think are the top three advanced tactics? Like, uh, you know, something that's not generally available on the internet. You know, a lot of people are saying just random stuff, but some advanced tactics to, you know, to grow a podcast, especially, especially in this year. Uh, what do you think are those? Yeah. And I think I, this is a great question. My first one would be, and this may seem obvious, but I just don't think it is, which is guesting being a guest mm -hmm. because I get exposed now to your audience. The people who you, who trust you now mm -hmm. can um, learn more about me in a setting, in a more trustworthy setting, right? So the benefits of guesting are exponential, right? You get the exposure, you get the content itself. You're going to make clips out of this. All I have to do is show up yeah. and you're going to give me clips that I can use in post. But then my audience is going to see what you're doing and your audience is going to learn about what I'm doing. So I think that it's so, you can really leverage the power of, of being a guest to grow your own podcast audience because mm -hmm. if you just, um, you know, deliver value and drop little bombs and little nuggets, you know, of information, then people realize that you're actually, uh, that you're really trying to educate and help people. And that's, that gets into kind of the philosophy around guesting. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go a little bit deeper on this point, which is, I think people look at it as like, oh, I'm just going to be there to advertise myself. Like this is, this is, this is just a stage. But if you yeah. get up on stage and start talking about what you do, it turns out people don't care, right? Yeah. It turns out that people really want to learn what can help them. Okay. And they might be able to learn that from your story and that's fine. But I think people will get up on a podcast and not know how to talk about what they do for that specific audience. And what I can do, Jeff, is I can go on your LinkedIn and through your comment section, as I do every day, because I'm in your comment section, I know who's listening to this podcast. I have a pretty good idea from people who are following your content, who is going to listen to this podcast and what the, those people are. I can just go through your LinkedIn network and I can just go and look at the job titles and see what people do. And I could assume most of those, you know, you, those people are going to be people who consume your podcast. So I think the guesting piece is really, um, is really huge. And I, dude, it's, it's, it's the other one is I know people, there's people say this too, and I, I don't have anything that's like crazy brown groundbreaking tips. I think that it's just super high quality content made for the platform, because you know, if you take your one minute clip for LinkedIn, it might do great but it's not going to do good on, on TikTok. I already know that. We yeah. both know that because TikTok requires a different clip. You can't have a square. First of all, you have a square video on TikTok, you're done. Like there's no way it's getting past 10 people. So I think this kind of, oh, I create video content. Well, what kind of content do you create and what size is it? And is it optimized for the platform, right? So, you know, I would say those are two big things, guesting. And then you cannot stop at one one short form video that's not enough now you have to make it in different ways customize in different ways for your platform to grow on those platforms and i know podcasts who have grown within one year um from zero to 10 100 million views on youtube and 100,000 subscribers just by creating the right content and if they just stopped at like oh well like here's the long form video and the long form audio and here's a clip then they would have never gotten there. It's really about that strategy and understanding these platforms. So those two guesting and then knowing the platform and creating content for the specific platform. That's what I would say.
that's great so you know you mentioned tiktok actually unfortunately for my indian audience this can't be uh, relevant because uh, tiktok has been banned in india uh, for a really long time but i you know i have i do have some of uh, you know western audiences and i think they would really love if you could just give a, a couple of things like you know how they can do well in tiktok because as a podcaster i have seen people dance a lot and i really want to be, uh, ask for those people who are non dancers so yeah. <laughs> someone who can't dance and act uh, you know just giving out tips for me i like to talk in a way you know just giving out tips i really like those people when someone say tin 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 i can't see those things it, it just runs away even before i'm seeing it so just just a tip for them uh, anything you have i think i have in mind yeah and and i would say all right so first of all this is for people who have I'll, I'll i'll angle it towards people who have podcasts so how to use your podcast content to grow on the on TikTok, Instagram, Reels, YouTube Shorts, etc. Um, you know, I would say is first of all, obviously you got to have the video. If you don't have a video, if you don't have a webcam, if you don't have a camera, whatever's recording your video, it's not going to work. I can already mm-hmm. tell you that. Because these platforms don't support just audio, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have that visual component. Next, what you're doing is like I said, creating content for the platform. What mm-hmm. is working on there? I'm talking go to these podcasters pages and look at their content and see what's working. Do they have and look, you can literally go to these these pages. Do they have ums, uhs, likes, and and pauses in their content? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I go, oh, now I got to remove all ums, uhs, likes, pauses, anything awkward. Got to remove that. Okay. So step number one, we got it. We understand that the content, there has to be zero fluff, straight to it. Okay. Then we notice, oh, the first three seconds is the most compelling piece of the content. And then the end, right? So the beginning mm-hmm. and the end are the most compelling pieces of this content. Why? Oh, because on TikTok and Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts, which I believe in India, you probably have YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels, which this can somewhat apply to. And I can go through the nuances there. But, you know, that it's obvious that once you start realizing what works, I can start understanding what works. You're like, oh, wow, these people are designing these clips. So people watch the first three seconds, which allows them to watch the next five and then Mm. the next five. So. That, that's a real, real world actionable tip that I can give is take your video podcast, put it in your video editor. It doesn't matter what you use. I use perfect video on iOS, which is a $5 application. You don't even need a computer for this. So there's no excuses and put, throw your video in there, right? You can use handbrake to compress it and make it a small file and then just test, make 30, 30, 30 second videos. Right. Mm. And you can take one, five, one video, one, one minute video and change that the begin the first three seconds in five different ways and post yeah. one of those each day. And then you're going to know what type of first three seconds works and what type of the first three seconds doesn't work. And I know this is super nuanced and nitty gritty stuff, but this is just what works. Like this is just how it is. There's no, I, I wish it wasn't like this. I wish you can just post the clip you post on LinkedIn and it was going to do well but yeah. it just doesn't happen. So that's what I would say. You really have to understand how what works on these platforms and how do you do that? You look at what creators are successful, what they're doing. And number two is you have to test for your own content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I just want to clarify it because um, since these are three platforms that are actually measuring, majorly popping up in the vertical space, for example, this uh, TikTok, YouTube Shorts and Reels. So uh, there are a lot of podcasters who do like, you know, once posted on TikTok, they do the same content on reels and shots. So I just want to ask, uh, does that work? Do you know, the same content in every platform or the audience is different in each platform, like their retention rate or, you know, their interest and everything. Do you think it's different or it's kind of the same thing, uh, three of the platforms, especially in this short videos, at least. Yeah, they, so they are all different. And mm. so Instagram, what Instagram was doing is they were looking at TikTok and they're saying, we want, how are we going to keep people on our platform? It's mm. not that we want to be the next TikTok. The reason that Instagram has reels is because they want the, they need the attention, right? Yeah. Because the attention, it's just kind of numbers at the end of the day. Yeah. We have less attention, so we need more now. Mm. Um, how do we do that? We create a TikTok-esque platform. The problem is nobody understands how TikTok's algorithm Mm. works intimately, right? So Instagram's trying to replicate it. It's obviously not working. You're, Mm. you, and it's not working in the same way TikTok is. I don't, I know a lot of creators and I've done pretty well, like on Instagram reels, but it doesn't bring me as much reach as TikTok um, Mm. in terms of each individual video. But to answer your question, just because this is pretty nuanced, To answer your question, they are all different. YouTube now, on the other hand, with YouTube Shorts, they're not looking at TikTok and saying, we want to replicate them. 
Mm. YouTube Shorts wants to make their own thing. How are they doing that? They actually have, and this is a little bit insider information, but they have a YouTube, they have YouTube programs. They mm. give, um, they, they create groups of, of, high, of, of higher engagement, higher level creators, and they ask them, what's yeah. working and what's not working. They actually take feedback from creators. This is not something that Instagram and TikTok are doing. This is yeah. just something that YouTube is doing. So you, there are nuances in all these different platforms. No, what's something that works on YouTube might not work on TikTok and it might not work on Instagram. It could, <laughs> but it might not. So if you post those clips all around, you're going to notice which ones work better on which. I can't speak on which ones work better on which because mm -hmm. I haven't done enough yeah. YouTube shorts and I haven't even done enough TikTok to tell you. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, they they are all different. So it, this is the kind of Gary V approach of like ten, for 10 to 20 hours, watch YouTube videos and research mm -hmm. this stuff, you know, before you uh, dive into it. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, uh, you know, what you mentioned on Reels is kind of pretty, um, pretty true actually if you post on reels for the first time or second time it gives you like 14k 15k you know views and likes and everything then if you just if you, even if you consistently post it it won't give you the reach as much as tiktok did you know when it was there and uh, on youtube shots the thing is it's kind of i I've, I've been kind of posting almost like 80 some to 90 videos i think i've posted on youtube shots and out of all of that uh it's kind of showing a pretty consistent growth i actually got a lot of like 20 subscribers from youtube shots people who have watched youtube shots i got subscribers from that so anyone who's not trying like even if you're not trying just just explore it just give it a, you know a repurpose the content and post it out I, I think it might work but they're pretty new they're like extremely new to the space and they still have to create a lot of editing options on the platform itself on the other hand instagram reels they have like it's like a full form editor on they will have on instagram reels uh you know on tiktok too but youtube shots is like uh they're completely new. I, I think i think it's still uh a huge space to explore i think uh, i think the ceo actually mentioned in one of her interviews also in the youtube video mentioning that uh youtube shots is going to be something that they're going to be focusing on in, in terms of monetization as well so i think yeah i, th I think that might be a pretty good space i'm bullish on yeah. yeah, and I'm bullish on the YouTube. I, I I really now I don't agree with a lot of things that they've done and the censorship and things like mm -hmm. that. But I do agree that they really are. They are besides the censorship. They mm -hmm. are really about creators and they're mm -hmm. listening, right? And so that's where you go. And it's like, is Facebook doing that? No, it's obvious. Like Facebook, dude. They're they're they're. I don't want to. They're saying that they're evil is definitely harsh. They just don't yeah facebook's trying to monetize their creators but at the end of the day listen we all know what facebook's doing like they just it's data and attention like they're not really for the creators right um i don't even know if they're for the users really and uh you know that's a whole kind of more conspiratorial yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm definitely bullish on how on youtube and, and how shorts is going to play out here it's looking very positive got it got it Awesome. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that you mentioned is uh, the podcast, you know, the guesting stuff. So I've been, I, I have been a, in a guest, uh, as a guest, you know, probably I think four, four to five podcasts, I think. So I've been a guest talking about podcasting and I have one habit of talking way too long, <laughs> talking in a long answers because the questions are really general. Uh, you know, they want like, I don't need specific questions, like, you know, what my experience or what is this and that, that would be specific. So they will be asking like, what are the podcast promotion strategies? Then I would be like, I have to answer, like, <laughs> I have to answer like five to six methods. So, uh, you know, any, any tips that you want to give, like basically the thing that you have on your website as well, the four steps guide. So can you talk a little bit about that, uh, your take and, you know, just how to keep it as it is and how to be a great guest. Uh, it would be great. Yes. So you have to know how you're going to talk about mm -hmm. what you do. Yeah. And I think that's where people get caught a little caught up because you are in what you do. So it's hard to take yourself out of it to go like objectively, what do I do and how do I do it the best? Like, what is the, what is my thing? So that's why I start. What's your it factor, right? That's yeah. why it's in, and in the guide you referenced, I have the podcast guesting guide, use podcast guesting, grow, grow your business on my website. We can link it after it's completely free. Um, on there, I have discover your value as number one, right? And it's not like you don't know how you're valuable. It's that you probably don't know specifically what, mm -hmm. how you're valuable in a certain way um, or you're, how you're valuable the most to other people you've worked with and worked around, right? Yeah. So what I suggest is really asking people who you work with, asking people who, who are past clients, current clients, like what's that, what is my, um, you know, what's the, what, what, what was the number one thing for you working with me? 
Um, mm. what, what made the biggest difference, right? And so that's not going to be your end all be all. It's just going to give you these ideas to look at yourself objectively. Yeah. Um, and I know this is getting a little meta here, but when it turn in terms of guesting is I don't go on this podcast about podcasting and be like, obviously I touched on my music and I just said, yeah, I'm a rapper and producer. And I left it there. I don't tell you that I'm a wedding DJ. I'm a rapper. I've been doing it for five years and I've been I've recorded three albums and two EPs and all. I don't, that's not relevant to this conversation right so i think people want to like oh tell me a little bit about yourself and they're like oh what do you mean like yeah. a lot like what do i do so what i would do is really frame your story map mm -hmm. out your story what how are you going to tell your story we're on a podcast about podcasting i've been on interviewed on 30 40 50 podcasts i don't always talk about the first two podcasts that failed before i launched my business right but on this one it's extremely relevant because yeah. i need people to know that i didn't i'm not always successful at this even though i'm the podcast guy or whatever right mm -hmm. so you're once again like TikTok, you're playing to the platform you can't put the same content on every platform and expect it to work same thing with a podcast um, so number one, discover your value. What's the et factor? What's the thing you do for people, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not the best video producer in the world. Do I produce video? Do I have editors that produce video for you? That's great. Yeah, but I'm an audio guy. So like I can speak very intimately in the, in the audio world and, and the content world, right? So know what you're going to talk about and mm -hmm. know how you're going to talk about it. And a great way to do that. And I'll wrap up this thought with this an actionable thing you can do is X, Y, Z statement. That's something that's a marketing, it's in sales. I do X through Y to achieve Z. If you answer that question for you, and I'll say it again, I do X through Y to achieve Z. So you write down in your piece of paper, X, Y, Z, and you just write down X, Y, Z, and you just write down, I do X through Y to achieve Z. And that's a great place to start. So when somebody asks you, what do you do? Um, I help people launch podcasts through a podcast production framework to accelerate their personal brand. Boom. I just made that up off the top of my head of yeah. what I do. Right. So that's where I would start. That's good. So uh, just curious, is there any time limit unless until the, unless otherwise the guest mentions, you know, actually the host mentioned, sorry, if the host mentioned that you should be talking like, you know, four to five minutes for an answer or like, you know, we can have it casual. I mostly have it casual because uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a kind of an editor guy. So I just go out and sit out and edit all the things that I want. Uh, but I really want to have a good conversation in the middle. So that's my, uh, but when people set those things, uh, do you think it's good, uh, you know, as a guest to limit their answers, because I am not really that much of a guy who talks less. I talk a lot. So, uh, you know, in case for me or, you know, anyone, uh, do you think it's good that you shorten the answer that takes up the value or, you know, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's better to do for the host? A few things. I think it depends on the podcast, right? It depends, mm -hmm. like, you know, go through the episodes of that podcast if you're not confident about it and yeah. kind of see and get the gist of how long people are answering and what they're yeah. saying and what how they're saying it. So you already have, like, if the podcast isn't, isn't brand new, you already have a ton of examples from that specific mm -hmm. podcast. But yeah, if you're somebody like us who talks a lot, then you're going to cut, want to cut it down because you know that you're going to talk too much. Like if you know that's your instinct, then you know, okay, I'll cut it back. But if you're somebody who's difficult, it's difficult for you to open up, um, then you're going to probably want to do a little bit more planning around how you're going to talk about what you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And But in that way, it's probably better if you come from that place because then you can kind of pick and choose what you're going to say. Whereas with yeah. us, it's like, I want to tell you everything all the time. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that's what I would say. It's a, it's a few different a few different things at play here. You know, length mm -hmm. of the podcast, the host, the interview style, the podcast style and structure. Um, mm -hmm. But when it comes to you personally, I'd say if you talk too much, then probably you know that you can reel it back. If you don't talk as much, then you know that you can probably um, include a few more relevant things. Yeah. I think the host can also, uh, you know, stop at a certain time, you know, in a polite way. Uh, I, I actually learned this the hard way because there was this one guy I interviewed. I just asked him like, you know, please tell a little bit about yourself, how you started your journey. I should have been more specific. And he just went on and on and he ended his story, ended with all, all of the questions. I usually send the questions before and he answered all of them without even me asking for one hour and 15 minutes. It just went on. I didn't even open my mouth. It just went on and on and on. And uh, at the time, I didn't know, you know, whether it's good to that, you know, saying, it, you know, uh, hey, you know, ex his name. I mean, like, it's really great that you're saying all those tips. It would be great because, you know, just jump on to the next topic and see uh, what this continues and also. I should, I should have said it, but 
I don't know. I, I was really new at that time and I didn't want to be a guy who just say, stop, stop, stop. This is enough. <laughs> you can just for the next up. I don't want to say that. So I, I think it's good. But yeah, as a guest, you know, how would you take it? I just want uh, your opinion. How would you take it? Uh, have you ever got this experience? I just want to know. Oh, def- oh, yes. And I had a similar experience really early, you know, earlier on a few years ago. And after that, I definitely learned and so what i do is i i study a lot of interviewers like tim mm-hmm. ferris tom billiu all these mm-hmm. guys impact theory right um i study how they frame their interviews and the questions that they ask but i have no problem jumping in and saying hey whoa whoa whoa, wait reel it back we're gonna take it back a little bit you're going off it's fine it's totally cool this is a podcast but let's i want to take a left turn yeah now let's continue on. Now, let me ask you this. Like, I have no problem interrupting if I'm, if I know, because in the, and there's a few things once again going on here, right? I'm thinking about what I'm saying. I'm thinking about what the guest is saying. I'm thinking about the flow of conversation all at the same time. Um, and then I'm thinking about what the listener would like to hear. Yeah. And I'm thinking about if I was a listener right now listening to this, would I want to hear this? Hmm. So as a host, you develop that sixth sense where you can kind of take in all of these different variables yeah. at while while that person's talking it's tough to do um but for me I, i've over the years have made it a point to develop that self-awareness to know like like i have a pretty good like you know like i n- kind of know where we're at time wise right now yeah. like even without looking at the clock so the more that you do it you kind of know but yeah i'll 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 almost always uh, i have no problem cutting people off if i know that it's not it's my podcast like yeah. I don't, I'm not going to apologize for that because for, it's not for me or you, it's for the mm-hmm. listener. So if that is, if you're taking too long, then, you know, and I, and I don't think the listener is going to get value, then I will cut it. I would stop it right there. I'd just be polite about it. Hey, let's reel it back a little bit. I'd like to make a left turn, you know? Hmm. I, I, think that, I think that's a good sentence. Most probably people actually, you know, don't understand uh, what to say. <laughs> I think, you know, people can actually release newsletters like this. I really, uh, love or i really want podcasters who teach podcasting you know to release content like this like when you should stop your you know podcast guess if it goes on and on uh what dialogue to use i mean there aren't any blogs or anything i think at least there aren't any blogs uh at least you know the i'm so thing. with you dude i'm yeah. <laughs> so with you we need to get as granular as yeah. possible and that's what i've what both of us have been doing with this content some of the videos you post i don't know how other people consume it because like i'm the only one that might understand this little nuance you know and i'm like if you haven't interviewed like 50 people you might not understand this nuance or whatever yeah. but that's so true because if you look as you know this jeff if you look online everything about podcasting is just clickbait for seo and yeah. it's just super general stuff that somebody took from five other articles and put into yeah. one and just cited them all like there's no new ideas in these most pop in the most popular content about podcasting so yeah man um very good question there i, I love those little nuanced we can just do a whole podcast about the nuances yeah. <laughs> of you know after episode 50 the life after episode 50 you know or something like that yeah exactly actually you know i i i just started this new uh show i haven't like fully organized it yet it's called uh podcast near me so i actually kind of like want to put really like one or minute one minute or you know one minute 30 seconds or you know probably or even five minutes just to mention these things like how to get your first 100 episodes or how to you know uh, stop a guest near our um, uh, just just things like that I, i'm really trying to get the topics but yeah it's, it's something that i really want to do so yeah i can definitely get you on we can definitely talk a couple of things here and there the nuances i i, I think it would be totally great i'm down <laughs> awesome so you know uh this is something i really want to ask because uh you have a uh, company and you have a team and i know you have been running a solo show for a solo you know business for a really long time and i also did i now got a couple of people in my team as well and a couple of freelancers i really want to know how do you do that <laughs> it's sometimes maybe exhausting like like you said you know they might fuck up and you might need to you know tell them to do it properly and everything so how do you build this team and how do you manage them as a podcaster uh, you know if anyone who's trying to do that expand their uh, stuff so it would be great to hear about yeah i think you know it's kind of the obvious things i don't have any um you know crazy prescriptions about this i'm learning about it and and but but the number one thing is what i would say is 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 leadership hmm. um you you're the second that you have somebody under you the second that you're in charge of giving them money 
um, that's, that's when, I don't want to say that's when you become a leader, but that's when you, that's not when you become one, that's when you're forced to become one. Right. Yeah. And so, and it doesn't even need to be a financial transaction. If somebody's giving you their time at first and you're asking them to do something specific that they weren't going to do now you have to lead them. And yeah. so I've been obsessed with learning about this. And like I said, I've consumed Gary's content for a long time. I've learned a lot about it through him, John Maxwell. Um, I've taken a lot of leadership classes, you know, but that doesn't do anything. You have to lead the team. You have to be in an ethical, morally challenging situation to learn, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it, when you're building a team, if you're somebody who hasn't managed people before, or doesn't really maybe naturally have that skill, just know that you have to constantly be putting yourself in their shoes. And that's something that is difficult to do when you're trying to balance 400 things. I literally have my assistant calling me right now, you know, and I'm not going to pick up the phone because I'm on a podcast and I'm dedicating this time. But even those boundaries, he knows that if I'm on a podcast, I'm not going to pick up. It's all good, you know. Um, and, and, and so it's but it's those things like when do you when do you when are you available? Are you available on India time? Are you available on US time when your freelancers available? Can you call me after five? Or is that cool? Or only sometimes like all of these nuances, like anything that can go wrong will go wrong when you have a team and a business and really being self aware and working on your self awareness working on those leadership skills. I think that's huge. But if I want to go to the practical route, um, when you're hiring somebody, like the more that information that you have to give them, the better, the more, yeah. if you, the, the, the least, the less specific you are, the worse it is. So you want to be extremely <laughs> yeah. specific about what you expect, what you expect from them, general guidelines, right? All of these things. And I'm not saying I'm, I can't speak on it from an expert position. Hmm. I have five people or as of today, I'll probably have five people. Um, I've been having, I've had a team of three for a, a year now and and so that's really what I've taken from it, though. It's it's you have to step up and be a leader. It's hard to do that. It's really comes yeah. with the experience, I think. Yeah, yeah, man, I can totally understand. I mean, uh, right now I'm actually working in a company, uh, but before joining that, I actually had a small, uh, you know, startup like, uh, like mostly video production, and that's the thing I'm working like micro content creation. That what I've been doing with myself, I've been helping a couple of people. I'm still working with them. And uh, the thing is, when I joined this company, this company guys are really cool. They're really chill. Uh, but when I joined, I was like, it's really hard to take orders from them. Like, you know, when you are giving a lot of orders and stuff to someone else and when they give, I mean, like it was so hard for me to implement, even though I know what's, what is it, you know, content marketing or what is it? It's really hard. It's really hard to, uh, implement what they're trying to say. That's when I understood, like, when I'm saying this to someone, I might be like this expert guy who knows everything and saying it to him, but he doesn't know the field entirely. He needs to, you know, learn from me. Like you said, the specifics, it's way better. So I you don't that... know it until you teach it, right? That's yeah, really it. Yeah, you don't exactly. know it until you try to, because I just hired an audio engineer. I'm an audio engineer. I'm like big freaking audio <laughs> guy, you know, but then I'm like, oh shit. Like, I don't even know what to tell this guy. And he's like, <laughs> can I like send it to you for feedback before I give you the final edit? I'm like, yeah, yeah that's a great idea, dude. Let's yeah. do that. You know? And it's like, wow. And, but it's really also empowering those people to be like, Hey, yeah. listen, I don't know what I don't know about our relationship, you know? So if you know something and you're like, Hey, don't be afraid to, Hey, Sully, you like, even my, my guys one day, they were like, dude, you got to relax. Like you got to take yourself out of this. You got to stop being the bottleneck. Right. And right then I go, all right, cool. Now I just added another layer of self-awareness, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it is very tough. Um, if you're, you don't know it until you teach it really, truly. 100%. <laughs> uh, that's really an important stuff. Awesome. Uh, so just, uh, you know, a couple of things then, you know, before the closing is that, uh, is it morning or uh, evening that what's actually the time? Yeah, I'm about morning now. So 1144 coming up about to the middle, almost noon. Almost. Okay, cool. So the thing is, this is always an outside out of the box question. I always ask my, um, you know, guests, which is who was actually the last person that you made smile yesterday? I think my girl, cause it was Valentine's day for sure. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I should have, I should have the last question person <laughs> that I saw at the end of the yeah. day. So, yeah. uh, that's nice. Great question. Though. I like that. Awesome. So uh, this is one of the technical questions I always want to ask, but I never got the actual person to, uh, you know, to uh, answer. The, I mean, like to ask this question, like, how do you actually add your podcast to all the podcast directories? The reason being is that you, you are podcast launch, you know, person who helps people, right? So obviously that podcast is, you know, can be in different directories. 
i heart radio or bullhorn or you know just etc etc so how do you do that do you like one hosting platform to everyone or you do have to go manually like how many options are there it would be great to shoot that away yeah i use a company called captivate captivate mm-hmm. dot fm i believe is the website um yeah. i love them i've been using them for two years now and i switched from anchor to them uh mm-hmm. the reason why is because i was creating this company and i was launching other people's podcasts so i yeah. needed a company that was going to allow me to host as many podcasts as i wanted um and so that's the real benefit they charge based on the amount of plays that you get um mm-hmm. so you can literally go on there and i think I, I believe there might be like a free account or free trial. I pay $20 a month and I host like eight podcasts on there. Now, if, mm. if those podcasts get up to hit that listen mark, then I'll have to upgrade my membership. So if you mm. have a podcast that has millions and millions of downloads, you might want to another comp, uh, platform might be better for you. But I, my podcasts have thousands or tens of thousands, but not, we're not really at that. Like we don't have any that are in that million kind of zone. So um, captivate has been great for that. And it's an analytics based platform. So when you mm-hmm. log in anchor notice anchor says record an episode yeah. captivate goes, here's your stats, bro. Check it out. You know, yeah. the stats are right there. Like you can't, Oh, you only got three plays today. Well, you're going to know it <laughs> right there. So yeah. I like that. It's a very real approach. They have a WordPress plugin. I can go on about the benefits of them, but I love captivate and um, I'll probably be sticking with them. I've been them with them for a couple of years. So. Got it. So they obviously distributed to all the platforms like, Oh yeah. Yeah. As you said. Um, I, yeah. All the ones that I'm concerned about. I mean, I think there's 15 that they, sh- hmm. they, that they shoot it out to. It might be 20. Um, but, but yeah, so that's, they, they're on all the ones that all the major ones, and then they're on like at least 10 or 15 smaller ones. And then some of those smaller ones will bring, put you on other ones yeah. as well. So I think at the end of the day, you're probably on like 15 or 20 total. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Because, you know, one of the reasons why I always ask is that, uh, this question I really want to know is that is this is radio. Okay. I radio is kind of actually the biggest, you know, listening platform on South America, I guess, probably I interviewed one guy who's a product podcast production uh, owner and he mentioned iHeartRadio has been extremely powerful when it comes to South America. And, you know, there are some other platforms who's extremely powerful in particular platforms. Like in India, there is called Hubhopper or even Anchor. There are like few platforms like you know, regional based. So I guess if that podcast isn't hosted or directed towards that directory, you know, it might not get a lot of listens. So that's one of the things I think. Uh, even Amazon music is, 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 is also being released a podcast as well. So I guess, you know, yeah. it's better to have like, um, in every place possible. Yeah, it does. I've heard that before and I've heard, and even the, um, I believe Ghana is the Indian yeah. based platform. Ghana, yeah. So I, we've had podcasts get uploaded to Ghana and then get like hundreds of plays just from that platform. Cause they must have some kind of spotlight for new shows or something yeah. like that. So yeah, for like, I, <laughs> this is what I say at the end of my podcast. Every time I go, we're on all platforms, even the ones nobody uses, <laughs> right? Because I don't even know who uses some of these, but it's not about who I know that uses them. It's about people in other countries consuming iHeartRadio more or consuming yeah. Ghana more. So yeah, you gotta be on all of them. Um, I believe Captivate does support iHeartRadio mm-hmm. and they support Amazon too. So. But yeah, that's very important to me to, uh, you know, it's nice to have that Alexa optimization yeah. too, which is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, I think that's a whole different, like full exploration need to be done for the Amazon, you know, Alexa voice stuff for the, for the podcasting and stuff. That's a whole other area. Oh yeah, <laughs> whole other podcast for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So, uh, Ryan, it's been totally great. I'm so sorry for taking too much of time, but you know, I just want to like, uh, you know, wrap up with this podcast, um, with one final thought, you know, what do you think actually is the best tip that you can actually give to a fellow podcaster so that, you know, he can grow his podcast. Like if, if someone is just starting out, just one tip, one tip that's coming on top of your mind, anything at all. Just don't stop. Continue. <laughs> that's it. Like if, and if you do stop, Tell your audience why you're stopping and when you're coming back. That's great. So yeah, you heard it peeps and I'll definitely link everything in the description below and I'll definitely get the resources that you mentioned, like uh, one of your podcast guesting guides and your website and everything. So you can go and check it out. Uh, before closing, I just want to ask, like, is there anything else you want to ask me? Like tables turned right now? Oh yeah. I mean, um, well, what is the what is the number one thing in podcasting that you're trying to figure out right now and work on? Actually, I have, if you could pick something specific, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, this this may not be, this may not be the answer you're looking for, but I've been trying to figure out for a long time 
to tell people what actually is a podcast <laughs> to be honest like uh, you know people from my area they don't know about the podcast is they seen a lot of interviews and everything but there aren't any uh, much uh, of a podcast i'm actually doing another uh, original show for a company it's in a regional language so they are really new to the podcasting space so it's like i need to work on explaining what actually a podcast is so <laughs> it I, it's been it, it took me 2 years to explain to my parents what i'm doing so i think it would take a, a long time to explain you know to I'm other people i'm at about 4 well. years and i still don't think they really get it so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the same. Hey, if you come up with a good explanation, send yeah. it my way. I'll steal from you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Ryan, thank you so much again uh, for coming onto the show. So, in case people want to find you, you know, in places that they don't even listen, like you mentioned, please uh, list them below. Uh, I'd be happy to, you know, just send them to them. Yeah, sure. Podcastprinciples.com for for the business, anything podcast related. We the only thing I'm going to plug here is our new podcast. It's called. podcast principles and it's uh we're keeping it on brand guys uh guys and gals and so that podcast is a 15 step guide a 15 episode um series uh season so to say uh bi-weekly so every other week uh we drop on this Monday the 14th and it goes all the way to August and it's a 15 episode season on how to launch your podcast start to finish and it's not really the actionable pra- it's not the the hey this is how you edit it's more so how do you um is podcasting practical how many people are listening is it saturated um what platforms do i use is is how do i promote it five ways to monetize it all of these basically the questions that you and i get asked all the time that's the basis of of this show short and sweet 5 to 10 minute episodes every other week um to sh- teach you how to podcast start to finish so that's the only thing i'll plug it's at podcastprinciples.com and you can find it there on the website good and guys it's actually available on youtube as well uh, first episode has been yes. released it's called the uh, finding the why so you can definitely go mm-hmm. and check it out and if in case you saw, you know saw it through this episode just put it as you know came from uh, just podcast academy it will be totally great <laughs> oh yeah plug that man 100% Awesome. So okay, thanks so much Ryan and uh, guys, this is the end of the episode and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks Jeff.